final kind of air pollution control device that is going to be discussed in this lecture uh, is electrostatic precipitator. So, an electrostatic precipitator so as the name suggests it uses the basic principle here is a principle that we learned in electrostatics statistics that uh, some particles are charged and then they move in an electric field so uh, how electrostatic precipitators are different from the previous category that we discussed, that we just discussed. Uh, what we found in the previous category was that when we were applying energy, when we were supplying water, so the energy that we were applying was to the entire media. So in the scrubbers, energy was applied to the entire media while in the ESP the energy is only applied to the particles that have to be removed So the energy is only applied to the particles that has to be removed. Uh, here, uh, therefore, uh, I'm not saying less energy is required, uh, but um, we can remove finer particles than were covered with even with scrubbers. So we can remove finer particles. Uh, there is no pressure drop so you can directly move from an ESP to the next instrument uh, and expect some good results how an ESP works is explained in three steps uh, before I begin with the three steps I think I will draw a diagram uh, so that it's easy to understand so what I'm drawing is a top view now this is not necessarily how all precipitators look but uh, this is just to give you an idea of what happens uh, So picture the gas coming in here and it has many particles in it. Yes, so what is going to happen is that the first step So the first step we have in an ESP is the charging of these particles. So the charging by corona discharge. So what will happen is that when these particles, uh, when so the corona discharge creates some ions and what is going to happen is uh, these particles so this is a negative corona discharge that I've drawn here. So what is going to happen is all these particles will also have a negative charge when they come in contact. Not in contact but in the field of this charging electrode. So uh, the charging like I've drawn in the diagram is not necessarily negative but uh, it is mostly uh, taken as negative 
so uh, in the large scale electrostatic precipitators the corona discharge is always negative and uh, the negative corona discharge has a disadvantage that it leads to a uh, leads to the production of a lot of ozone and as we studied uh, that ground level ozone is uh, very harmful and it is a pollutant in fact it is one of the one of the uh, criteria pollutants um, while the positive uh, discharge requires more uh, requ requires less energy and is usually used in indoor settings so once these particles are charged they are going to move in this electric field uh, so these are our collecting electrodes uh, the ones that I have marked with a positive uh, so the there is an electric field that is created and these negatively charged particles are going to move along that field and they will be attracted to these positively charged electrodes so the second step is collection of these particles now these particles uh, are going to come up here and they're all just marking them with little lines to show that they're negative uh, so what is going to happen is that they are all going to come and uh, deposit here at the collection electrode so the forces responsible for the deposition of the particle at the collection electrode are not just electrical which is pretty obvious from the electric field that is created and the name electrostatic precipitator so the forces are not just electric but there would also be mechanical forces in terms of the inertia of the particles and there are also going to be molecular forces so there will come a point where the particles will keep depositing and they could perhaps deposit in layers over each other because once they come in contact with this positive electrode they are going to be positively charged so there could be some layers a few layers of particles being deposited till uh, no more particles can be deposited on top of it so there will be no more like it no more holding power in the collecting electrodes to hold on to any more particles so they're kind of saturated at that point so what happens at that point is removal of these particles so there are okay removal so there are two ways of removal of these particles uh, they can either be removed by just quickly you know uh, dropping the charge which is you know if you just quickly momentarily just even momentarily just turn off the electrodes uh, all of the particles that are stuck to it will drop off and will collect in our collector here and uh, if not that uh, then the other process is simply knocking uh, where uh, what happens is these collecting plates are actually physically knocked against by another device another device or something uh, so say this plate comes this plate comes up and knocks against it so what it is going to do is it is going to loosen all the particles and they're all going to drop and collect here again so an important criteria before deciding to use an electrostatic precipitator is the resistivity of the particles if the resistivity is too high it would just mean that the particles cannot get charged so easily which basically just fails the purpose of an electrostatic precipitator but if they like if it is too low the resistivity if it's too low what is going to happen is that uh, as it is moving through the electrical field and when it comes here the charge 
the particle is instantly going to lose its charge and therefore it cannot maintain its charge for too long and therefore it will not stick to the plate. So it loses charge too easily. Now coming to some advantages of precipitators. Uh, the main advantage why it is widely used is that it has a very high efficiency. Uh, the efficiency is mostly 99.9 percent .9 and up in all, most, almost all practical applications. Uh, it can handle very high flow rates uh, at around 15 thousand liters per minute. It can handle very high temperatures so you know you can have a hot gas directly coming into an electrostatic precipitator. Uh, yes and uh, the thing is electrostatic precipitators can also work in a wet environment so they, they can also be used in a wet environment. Uh, electrostatic precipitators uh, there is no scope for re-entrainment. And uh, there is no longitudinal mixing. And uh, yes, so there is a yeah, so there is no longitudinal mixing. Uh, so an equation which gives us the efficiency of an electrostatic precipitator. I'm just going to introduce that. I am not going to get into how it is derived. Uh, so the efficiency of an electrostatic precipitator is 1 minus So here W is uh, the velocity of the particles AP is the area of the plates So when I'm given the dimensions of one plate uh, I have to keep in mind that there will all there will be two plates always in an electrostatic precipitator and each plate will have just one surface uh, and the Q is the flow rate of the gas. This is called the Tosh and Anderson equation. or it's just the DA equation for shock.